Hi guys, it's James here from Optics Warehouse, your night vision and hunting specialist. And I have a very special video today that I wanted to explore with you. And that is how night vision has changed physically and obviously the internals as well over the past five to seven years. Because working in the industry for near enough that sort of, that sort of time, I've really seen quite a dramatic change in both how compact units have become, how much better the image quality has become, and generally how much better the whole units have become. So what I've got in front of me here is I've got an array of units through the, through the past five years, I'd say. And I'm gonna go through, I'm not gonna go in depth about to each one, I'm just gonna compare it as to what, what it represented at the time, the price bracket it represented at the time, obviously how technology has advanced since then, and then how that represents it in, the, in today's market. So, what I have in front of me is I have a, an absolute classic, a Pulsar N550 with its illuminator. This is actually one of the very first night vision scopes that I had. I thought it was brilliant, I thought it was the bee's knees, I thought it was the be all to end all at the time. Uh, but obviously as stuff has moved on, so is, so, is, um, so is the way that I shoot. And now, seeing that now, when I compare it to what's available, it's just a bit like, right, okay, that's a massive leap. So N550, uh, absolute golden oldie that unit as I say it's um it really is quite quite was quite a good unit in its day next to it I have its most recent upgraded younger brother and that is the N450 LRF um, again the technology in this far surpasses the N550 it's got a nice nice identification range really positive image throughout the, throughout the whole unit and a really easy to use menu system plus the built-in LRF, that is, yeah, that helps helps like no end. I say it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, anyone can know the ground like the back of their hand, but when it comes to it at night time, sometimes we get illusions just play with our head, and therefore you can't necessarily tell exactly how far away something is. But the point is, it's developed from its older brother with its this box-shaped system. Whereas if you look at the 550, if I actually get it up, it's quite hefty. That's like a solid break, that unit. It's really quite square, and they've just like bam, hit the, uh, bang the, um, the uh, eyepiece on the back. And all it is is you've got all these buttons, big external buttons uh, that you've got to press. It's not all together. It's, um, it's all, all very adjustable. You have to know exactly what's going on. And one thing I actually found quite annoying at the time having it is the battery compartment. It's actually quite in a concealed concealed place and you had to unscrew it. And yeah, I mean, I've, I've not got the biggest of hands. I'm not saying I do, but if you do have particularly big hands and you're trying to get your thumb around there, yeah, it's, it's quite hard. I mean, it's hard enough for me as it is. So to have to, have to put um, AA batteries in there was a bit, of a bit of an incumbence. And as I said, it is quite a heavy unit. I mean, don't get me wrong, internally, nice quality image. You can positively identify a fox, no issue at all. But as I said, there's, there's more advanced things out there now. And if you look, obviously, with the IR that comes with it too, again, quite big and bulky. The new IRs, they are a bit smaller, a bit more compact, and a bit more adjustable. So moving on from, from the 550 to the 450 LRF, obviously what has happened over time, one thing you can see is that they have elongated the chassis on it. It's slightly lighter as well, and it's more of that scope feeling to it. It's got a lower profile. It's not quite such a brick as it was before. All the menu systems are in one place, and the battery, ever since the IPS system has come out, the IPS 5, IPS 7, 10, 14, whatever it is you're using, these are a phenomenal piece of kit. So easy to use, so easy to charge up. Just click them in and just put it in and then just click it down just like that, and there you go. They last a bloody long time. You've got a nice focus on the front there, real positive flip up cap just there. You can adjust it obviously to however you want. And it's nice and easy to zero during the daytime as well with the, the small filter on. Um, you got your cable on the side, you plug that in, put your video in, obviously charge it up as well if you wanted to. But the LRF, that is a massive addition. That really does help. As I said, it really it's really helped me in a, in a few situations, especially if you're shooting where you're looking up a hill. Yes, obviously it's safe, you've got plenty behind you and you're not shooting on the brow, but it's, um, it makes it makes it nice and easy to determine what the actual distance is. And as I said, the elongated, it really helps with the eye relief. Rather than having to cock your head forward that you get with the 550, it's, um, it's quite nice and it sits back quite well. Uh, with the adjustability on the bottom of the rail as well, you can get it absolutely bang on. So, 
That is the direct upgrade from the 550 to the 450 LRF and how that has changed over time, how that specific unit has changed over time. If you asked me about five years ago, who was the leading brands in night vision uh, and thermal and all that sort of stuff, the first thing I'd say straight away without a doubt would be Pulsar. There's, there's no doubting that. They've been around a very long time. They're very good units. And if anyone having night vision five, six, seven years ago, you were either using a dedicated Pulsar uh, a front add-on pulsar or you were using like a starlight archer or longbow they were the they were the options because they were the best at the time in the past three years more and more digital brands have come about and one that has made an absolutely massive impact onto the market is pard um, now not everyone gets on with a pard and not everyone is happy with how how pard work how the pards work sorry because because of obviously where they're from and because the fact that they are mass produced obviously on the other side of the world that can put some people off because it's not necessarily the most reliable market however the price points the clarity the ease of use of these units has really put a big step into the market it really has opened up the floodgates for other units to come about i mean like the 008 here i mean i mean goodness me it's it's only just a bit bigger bit bigger than my hand and that is nothing that's just really not a big unit at all it's um, so nice and compact, fits easy on any Picatinny system, um, but as I said, it's, it's, it's just a nice handy scope to have on your rifle. It, makes, it makes, makes your life a hell of a lot easier. And then one thing that they really did, they really did hit the nail on the head, is having a rear add-on, and that is the PARD 007. Uh, the price point that this thing is aimed at is phenomenal. Uh, a sub £400 unit, that you can adapt any day scope with relative side focus onto it and parallax adjustment. Uh, um, you can you can turn it into a nighttime scope. I mean, who wouldn't who wouldn't want that? Save you forking out say a grand or or a little bit more on a night vision on a dedicated night vision scope. It, it really does offer the cheaper, more well, the more affordable alternative, I should say. And this is rated right the way down from air gun shooting at say 15 yards right up to a center fire, say 22, 250, 204, 243, shooting up right up, say, if you can, up to 400, 500 yards. So it's, it's an absolutely brilliant, it's an absolutely brilliant piece of kit. It's so versatile, can use across a range of systems, and it's nice and easy to use with an 18650 battery, which you can get out of any electronic store that you want. But uh, so the image, crystal clear inside, especially on the new 007A, which is obviously the update from the MV007, nice crystal display inside. And it's just, it's just an easy unit, in all honesty. I, I, in fear of just repeating myself, it's just, it really is that simple to use. So that's really where, where night vision has come from in terms of these big, bulky, dedicated units to these, maybe making it more compact, nice and easy, nice crystal clear image inside, and then of course the usability and the ease of access with the with the NV007 being able to clip it onto any day scope system so you ask yourself right okay where can we really go from there in terms of night vision and the answer i have is to my left is there's two outstanding products uh products that we have sold really a quite quite a significant amount of they've had a massive impact on the market both are each good in their own right there's not really a huge amount between them obviously yes one of them is day night and one of them is night vision but as i said i'll go into that in just a second and that is, of course, the Pulsar Digex, which is, I'll be honest with you, is a firm favourite of mine. Um, it's a fantastic scope. And then, of course, we have the ATN 4K Pro. Um, both scopes, in their own rights, are great pieces of kit. And what these represent in the night vision market is that there is now the possibility of instead of having to have a Picatinny system on your rifle, regardless of what it is, which can be quite hard, especially if you're using an air gun, these, these two scopes, they will fit on any 30 mil ring system. So that just opens up a wide range of mounting solutions. So as long as you have a set of rings that are 30 mil high, I'd recommend, um, then you can put them on any system. So you can put it on a 9 to 11 mil dovetail, you can put it on a Picatinny, put it on a Weaver, put it on a CZ 550 series, Tika T3 series, anything like that. Anything with a unique measurement at the bottom, as long as you've got the 30 mil mounts that correspond to that, you can mount these optics on top. Um, as I said, these represent the forefront of the night vision market at the moment. 
you have the same technology in this particular model, so the Digix, that you do in the 450 LRF, with the new, obviously, the sunlight algorithm that they have built in that really intensifies and actually makes it incredibly sensitive to light and obviously then, therefore, makes it really easy to identify. Um, it's a nice, nice unit for eye relief. As I say, works exactly the same as a day scope. And yes, it has the features that look like a day scope, but of course they are false to actually, to what they are, but obviously you've got your menu systems on the side there and whatnot. And I mentioned earlier on about the IR on the 550, as you can see on the Pulsar and the Digex, it is, is comparable, it's, it's, well, it's easier to use. You just unscrew the, unscrew the top there, and so you can, you can maneuver, maneuver this about to wherever your scope is pointing. To your to your position and then this particular one it's not bolted on in any fashion all you do is you just lift this up that just unclips and then you can just literally just roll that off and there you go so that when you're using it during the daytime to zero you don't have to have have to have the ir on the back so it's as i say it really is the forefront of of where night vision has gone what it represents um, as far as I'm aware, these these are the best in the market at the moment. Uh, but I say we'll have a look at the ATN as well, and I'll just I'll just go overview as to why why each one has its own pros and cons. But as I said, this is dedicated black and white night vision, so it's a pretty damn good image. I'm not going to lie. And then let's have a look at the 4K. For ATN 4K, an American American branded product, uh, and as we all know, they all have better kit over the pond than we do. Uh, unfortunately, but that's the way it is. Um, again, it's on a 30 mil mounting system, as I said, with the Digex, that's all you need. Menu system on the top, it could not be easier. You've got your zoom on the side, so again, you just zoom in three to 14 times on this one. You've got your objective focus on the end here, I say that's, that's nice and easy, and again, your ocular focus there. Works exactly the same as any adjustable objective day scope, so like, say your, your Hawk Vantage AOs, your Nico, Nico Sterling Mountmaster AOs, they have the same, same style system on them. But obviously this is, this is um, digital day and night vision. So as I said, the, the one thing that this has over the Digex is that it has the day color mode, and that makes it incredibly easy to zero. That makes it um, nice and easy to shoot with. You can actually use it as a day scope. So say, say for example, you had a 243, um, you didn't really have the budget to go for a separate foxing rifle and a separate deer rifle. With the 243, you could put this in day mode. Yep, there you go, oh, okay, I'll, I'll shoot, my, shoot my deer in, in, um, in the morning or at night. Okay, fine, I'll go foxing out tonight. Press the button, put it in night mode, whack an IR on there, and then there you go. Doesn't lose zero, stays exactly the same, and it's set up to the same rifle then. Of course, you can put it across different profiles, but obviously that's just that is just an example of how how you can use it. Video video recording that has become um, quite a, a key feature as well. Um, but if you look at these units, you can do this through an app. You can so the ATN you can do through an app. You can do the Digex through an app. You can do the Pods through an app, and you can do the new M450 through an app. It's all there. You can do it all wirelessly through your phone. And say, when I come back to the M550, you have to all do it through cables. Had to all come through a cable system, so you had to have a separate monitor or a small recorder, and then you can just you can do it that way. But the use of an app, especially the ATN app, the ATN app you can actually use and you can set the rifle scope up without having to touch the scope. You can actually zero it, have the rifle set up, and move the reticle to where you want it to go. Um, I mean, you can't really complain about that, to be honest. Uh, but uh, and really, really, guys, as I say this stuff really has come on over the past five years i, I mentioned you might have heard me mention earlier on about like say like the uh, the dragonflies and the arches and all that sort of those tube night visions yes they were they were the bee's knees in the day but digital really has really has come about now and it's um it's starting to show itself it's saying that we are we are better than the tube stuff tube stuff is unfortunately slightly depreciating in value as is this older digital stuff now because this is just more, there's just, um, I say, I want to say that, say it as such, but there is this better, better technology uh, that you can use that makes makes this um, semi obsolete. I would say. I mean, this is still good if you're not looking to spend a huge amount of money, but want a good, reliable unit from the past. Then yeah, fantastic. The M450, the M550, sorry, is for you. And we're very fortunate. We actually do get quite a few of those in part exchange for for the newer units. Basically, guys, that's pretty much all I have to say. I mean, I've. So I've run through 
my experiences of, of, of night vision over the past five, six years or so, and how far it's come on. As I said, I'm amazed as, as the next person. I mean, so I've been in the trade now for a fair few years and it's just, how it's come on, it's just, it's just insane. It's just going at an exponential rate. God knows what's gonna come out next. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this, this little brief run through history as much as I have. Um, I say, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to, feel free to give us a call or drop us an email. But uh, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. I've been James, your night vision hunting specialist, and this has been another video by Optics Warehouse.